Hey everyone, so today I want to do another video on PineScript, and today we're actually going to be doing something that's inspired by a comment on a prior video, which suggested that we basically take a time and price value, such as the midnight open, and look at a given session to examine how often price returns to the midnight open, and perhaps half the range and some other stuff as well. So this is the indicator that we're going to be building right here. Basically, you're going to be able to select your open time. So I have mine set to midnight right now, and I'm looking for retracements during New York market open from 9.30 to 4 p.m. And I also have this retracement percent parameter where 100% would be a full retracement from the New York open price to the midnight open price. Or optionally, you could do something like 50 to see if we retraced half that amount and get some data that way as well. So essentially, if I have this set to 50, this red line is my midnight opening price. This blue solid line is the New York opening price at 9.30. And this dash blue line is basically our success criteria. So it is halfway between the midnight open price and the 9.30 opening price. And when we hit these levels, we'll see this label as we do for here as well. And that basically contributes to our success criteria. And we can also collect some data like our average distance from the open, where this is determined by basically this distance here from the beginning of our retracement window to our success criteria. What is the average distance there? And then lastly, just a sample size to see how many days we're analyzing. So to get started, I'm gonna turn this off and make a new indicator. You see, I called this one time-based retracement. So I'm just gonna do time-based retracement for YouTube, add a short title, and then set this to true so we can draw on the chart. So the first thing I want to do here is just define our inputs. So we can select our open time from the settings so we can just define that by open time. And there's going to be input dot session. And to get midnight, we're just going to do quadruple zero to zero 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 one. So basically 12 o'clock to 1201 AM. I'm going to call this open time. I'm just going to copy that. And that's just shift alt and down on windows and i'm going to call this one retracement time so there's going to be one we're checking for retracements to midnight and i'm just going to put this as 9 30 to 4 p.m again this is all going to be standardized to uh, new york local eastern standard time and the name for this in the settings window i'm just going to say retracement during this period of time and then the last one here is just the retracement percent that we defined so i'm going to say input dot integer default value of 100 because we want to see full retracements to midnight and then later we can just change that to see how the results vary so to check if we're actually in any of these time windows um, it's the same function so first of all i'm just going to check if we are at midnight and i'm just going to find this as t so i'm going to say t is not an a time parentheses you can just pass in empty quotes here to select the current time frame the session is going to be open time that we defined as the first parameter. And then the time zone, America, New York. And you can see here it pops up with a little window that gives you a link to all these time zone database names. So if you wanted to get some other time zone, you could probably find it here. And then I'm going to copy this again and make this for the retracement time to see if we are in the window from 9.30 to 4 p.m. So instead, that is going to use this which we defined right here from 9.30 to 4. And so I'm just going to highlight when we are in that period from 9.30 to 4 p.m. by using this background color function. So basically, you can see here that it accepts an argument of a color. And so what I can do is make this a conditional statement to say that if this condition is met, in other words, if we are in the time window from 9.30 to 4, we can say if that is true with this little question mark, then I want to do, let's say, color.new, yellow, set the transparency to 80 so it's kind of clear. Otherwise, we set it to no value. So as long as we are in this time window, we are going to be showing this color as the background, otherwise nothing. So if I save this, save, and add it to my chart, so you can see every time window from 9.30 to 4 p.m., we have this yellow background color. If we really wanted to, we could put this as a setting so we could change this without having to hard code it, but we don't really care about that too much right now. And I also want to basically draw a line that denotes our midnight. And so we're checking if midnight is valid with this T variable right here. So we can say if T and not T1, just to make sure that we are looking at the first instance where T is true, then we can do line.new. And I'm just gonna say the current time for our X coordinate, our high, it's just going to be the high of the current bar. Again, time for the x-coordinate for the lower value. 
and then using the current candles low. So basically that's just gonna draw a line from the current bars high to the current bars low. And when you're using time, you have to specify xlocation.bar time. I'm just gonna do extend equals extend dot both so that it's extending above and below price and a width of two. So I'm gonna save that. And if I go to my chart, we can see that each day at midnight, we get this blue line right here. And really quick, if I didn't have this extend line in there, if I just took that out and saved, it's kind of hard to see, but all that's going to do is draw the line from the high to the low of the current bar. It's not going to extend past in both directions like we had previously. So if I add that back in, save, then you can see it pops up again. So I'm going to go a little above that to write some new stuff. And I don't think we've ever done this on this channel, but we're basically going to define a custom type. And that's just going to help us track things a little easier. So I'm basically just going to define the name of it right here. I'm just going to call it tracking. I'll explain this more as we go on, but basically some data that we want to collect or some properties that we want to assign to this, we are going to collect an array of float values for the distance that I mentioned previously. So basically from the distance from the 930 open to the midnight open, depending on what our retracement percentage is. We're also going to have a line from the midnight opening price. We are going to have a line from the retracement session opening price. So this would be 930 in this case. And then we're going to have the actual retracement line. So for example, if this was set to 50, so halfway between the midnight opening price and 930 opening price, then that line is going to be marked by this. I'm also going to do float open price. That's to track that. And I also want to track the retracement price. I'm going to set this returned Boolean value to false, which is basically how we're going to track um, our success criteria. So basically when price hits the midnight value, we're going to set this to true and then stop updating because we don't need to check it anymore for the rest of the session. Then we're going to set a couple integers to count the number of times that price returned to midnight and count the number of sessions. And at the very end, we can just basically take count return divided by count sessions, and that'll basically be the percentage of times that price hit midnight. So all this is just defining what we want to have in this specific type. So we have to initiate it. And I'm going to do a one-time initiation so that all this data doesn't get overwritten on every bar. So I'm going to use the var keyword. I'm going to call this track. And we're going to do tracking.new. And the only thing we need to pass in here is this um, array of float values. So we can do that. And everything else will be initialized as you know no value. Or if we specifically set it to something like false or zero, then those will be maintained as well. So first things first, I want to go back to this loop right here where we're checking if we are currently at midnight. So when we are at midnight, there's a few things I want to do. I want to update our open price to be the current bar is open because we're only entering this loop at midnight. I want to make sure our returned variable is set to false. I want to clear our retracement price because we don't know what this is yet until we're in our retracement window. In other words, we have to wait for the 930 open. And I'm sorry, this should be false, not NA for the return value. I also want to increment our session counter because we're going to be counting this every time we reach midnight. So we're basically just indicating that we have a new day. And then I just want to set our actual open line to a new line where we can say the first X index is just the current time. The y value is just the current open. Our second x value, we can just do the current time plus one day. And how you would do that is time plus time frame dot in seconds day. So this will be obviously the amount of seconds in the daily time frame. However, this time variable is in milliseconds. So we need to multiply this by a thousand. Our second y value is going to be the open again. And since we're using these time parameters, we need to do x location dot bar time. I'm going to make this red and a width of two. So I'm going to save that. And now we can see we basically just have this red line showing our midnight open. Um, all the other stuff we set doesn't really appear on the chart, like our open price, returned, return price. But at the very least, we can confirm that this is working visually. So this is basically all we have to update at midnight. Everything else comes from once we enter this retracement window. So I'm going to say if we are in that retracement window, I'm actually going to split this up into a couple of conditions. So uh, similar to this, where we only want to update on the very first bar of that window, we can say, if not retracement T from one bar ago. So this is where we incorporate this retracement percent. And basically how we do this is we can say, I'm just going to call this offset. 
and this value is basically going to be the distance from the current opening price to the midnight opening price. And so I basically want to take the difference of that, multiply it by the retracement percent. And since this is a value, for example, 50, we need to divide this by 100 to make sure that this is basically cut in half. And I also want to make sure that this is not a negative value. So I'm just going to do math.absolute. So if this condition is negative, then we can just force it to be positive. Then I can do another check to see if we are currently above or below the midnight open. So this will be true if the open is greater than the midnight opening price. And now we can finally set our retracement price and all that stuff. So we can do track that retracement price. And the way we need to set this is by checking if we are above or below the midnight opening price. So if we are above, then we basically want to check to see if we're retracing to open minus this offset that we defined. Otherwise, if we're below the midnight opening price, then basically we're going to be checking the 930 opening price plus the offset. And I can save this offset so we can check later um, the average distance that we are away from the midnight opening price by doing track dot retracement distance dot unshift. So you can see here the value to add to the start of the array. So I'm adding this value to our array of retracement distances. And now I can do our retracement open line. So this is just going to be the line from 930 equal to line dot new. I'm going to do time again. The current bar is open time plus time frame in seconds of one day times a thousand again second y value is just going to be the open again x location of bar time i'm going to make this blue with a width of two i'm just going to save that for now just to see what it looks like so you can see we have these blue lines basically denoting the 930 open price that get extended until the following day's 930 open and so the last thing we're going to add here is basically the line that we want to retrace to. So if we wanted to retrace the 50% towards the midnight open, it would be somewhere around here or here. And we can do that by doing retracement line equals line dot new time. And so we already set our retracement price a couple lines above. So I can do track dot retracement price. I'm just going to copy this for the second X value. It's also going to be the retracement price again. X location, bar time. I'm going to make this blue as well width of two, and I'm just going to make this style dashed so it stands out a little bit. If I save that, then we can see the dashed lines here denoting where a full retracement would be. So if I set this to 50%, then we should see this line move up to somewhere around here. So 50, and it moves there, and it looks like it's working for every session in the past as far as we can tell. So now we basically just need to keep track of how often price hits this line. So I'm still in this loop of if we are in the retracement window. And now I'm going to say if we have not returned to that price, otherwise if not track returned, because we set that to false by default and reset it to false at every midnight, then we can basically just check to see if price has interacted with this level at all by saying if high is greater than equal to the retracement price and the low is less than equal to the retracement price, then I'm just going to do label that new. I'm just going to do bar index at the current high. And we want to set our returned to true because we have hit that level. And now we will stop looping through to check if we hit that level. And we also want to increment this count returned by one because we only want to increment this when we have hit the midnight opening price or whatever fraction we have it set to. And this is ultimately how we're going to track how often price tends to hit this value. So if I save that, now we can see these labels popping up when we do hit these levels. And actually, this is reminding me that by default, you don't have a lot of lines that are going to stay on the chart. So you can just do max lines count equals 500 in this indicator statement right here. Save that. And now we should have a much longer look back for the drawings to stay on the chart. So we can basically see the success criteria being met anytime within this window when price hits the dashed line. So we hit it here, label pops up. You can see we hit it here. We did not hit it here, so a label did not appear, and we did not increment that counter, hit the dash line here, and so on and so on. So we can basically confirm that this is working, and now we just need to make our table to kind of format our data. So common practice for me is just to do if bar state dot is last, so that we don't have to update all this table information until we're on the last part of the chart, just kind of save some memory. We can do bar table equals table dot new. I'm gonna do position dot middle right. I'm just going to set this to 10 rows and 10 columns. Background color, I can do chart.background color to inherit my settings. Frame color, you can do chart.fg color, which will basically 
be a high contrast color to your background. Frame width two, border color, same thing, FG color, border width of one. Now I basically just wanna set my headers here. So I'm gonna do table that cell, zero with columns, zero with row, retrace, slash n for a new line and then fraction so i'm going to be tracking the retrace fraction which is just from our settings and we can show this value at the first columns here with row we can do string that format and there's a bunch of documentation on this i'm just going to write it out because i have it right next to me but basically you have these curly braces you can do zero comma number comma percent and then i can pass in our retracement percentage divide it by 100 and if i save that then I can see it here, displays as a percentage, 50%, because that's what we have in our inputs. If I change this to 100, it'll be reflected in that table right there. Now I can do the rest of these, so I'm just gonna copy this over three times. So in the next row, I wanna do successful retracements. In the row after that, I wanna do the average distance from the open. And again, for this, I'm basically taking the average distance from 930 because that's what we have it set to to the line that determines our success criteria so if it's 100 percent, then we want to take the midnight price if it's 50 percent, we want to take half that distance and then lastly i'm just going to show our sample size basically number of days so if i save that just to see what that looks like without all the values you can see this is what it looks like so first index is the column second index is the row so i have them one after another here and now i can just fill in these so i'm going to do the same thing and just copy and paste this three times I'm gonna set this to the corresponding rows. And for this one, I don't actually have to change this format string right here, because we do wanna show a percent. And in this case, the percent is going to be the number of times that we return to midnight divided by the total sessions. And if I just comment this stuff out and save it, you can see that from the data available on our chart, we have had 71 successful retracements all the way from where we have retraced from the 9.30 open all the way to the midnight open. Now, if I go back to here for the third one, this is actually just gonna be a decimal value. This is not gonna be a percent. Instead, it's just, this isn't gonna be a percent value. It's just gonna be a number. So I can do this pound sign dot pound sign again to reflect that it's gonna have a decimal value. And I can just do track dot retracement distance dot average. And this one is just gonna be the same thing, but since we're only tracking the number of sessions, we don't need decimal value, so it can just be a single pound sign. And it's gonna be track dot count sessions. So if I save this, then it looks like we have everything here. So if I go to a different time frame, for example, I'm on the five minute right now. If I go to the 15 minute, I would expect our sample size to increase since we'll have more data. So we go from 77 to 219, successful retracement 67% over that sample size, average distance from the open, again from here to here for example average distance is around 60 points if i instead set this to 50 then we are looking at the average distance from here to here in which case that's 31 and our successful retracements are 82 percent which is expected to get a higher value here because we are traveling a lesser distance you could even set this to something like 200 i think yeah so what this would do is basically take two times the distance from midnight from 9.30. So one, two here, and track how often price reaches that level. That's only 47%, with a much greater average distance, of course. But yeah, that's basically how I would track something like this. Again, these types are super helpful because otherwise you would just have to have um, a bunch of variables kind of like this, but where you would have, you know, var open line and var retracement line, var returned, and basically just setting everything you have here as variables, but having it as a type makes it a lot easier because, you know, for example, if you wanted to track several opening times or several retracement times, you could just pass those in as parameters if you wanted to. Um, and, you know, just set these as methods where you don't have to rewrite the code over and over again and copy and paste the entire function. Um, so in maybe a future video, maybe we can do that where we can just make this stuff a little more dynamic so we can track that a little easier. But again, all this was based on a comment on a prior video. So if there's anything you want to see, let me know. It can definitely be featured. I'm always down to try new things. So if there's anything you want to see, definitely let me know in the comments. But that's pretty much everything I have for this one. So I hope it was helpful. Hope you enjoyed. Please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel. Definitely going to be doing more coding videos like these in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.